Welcome to Over the Falls podcast, episode number 24. This week, we sat down with UFC legend Hoist Gracie. Hoist Gracie is a Brazilian retired professional mixed martial artist, a UFC Hall of Famer, and a Gracie Jiu Jitsu practitioner. A member of the Gracie family, he is considered to be one of the most influential figures in the history of mixed martial arts. We were so lucky to spend time with him, learn about his family, his upbringing, fighting, and his bulletproof mindset. We can't thank West Coast Jiu Jitsu in Aberystwyth enough for making this happen. And a special shout out to Graham and Katya. We hope you enjoy. Take it away, Dave. Hi, it's Gracie. Welcome to the show. Welcome, um, welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. It feels very surreal saying those words, I'll be honest. Can we start with um, what it was like growing up with the brothers in Brazil and your first introduction to Jiu Jitsu? Well, growing up, to me, it was just another family. Yeah. It was just my friends, my best friends were inside of my own family, didn't have to go outside. There's so many of us. And train, we do everything to, we did everything together. We go to the beach together, we go to out of town together, to the mountains for the, my farm, my father's farm, my uncle's place over there in the mountains. So we hang out a lot together with the family. So we go train jujitsu together. Everything's a competition growing up. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> how, how old were you then when you had the introduction to jujitsu? Like, was it like one of your earliest memories, jujitsu, or was it? As far as I can remember, was walking. It's like playing the, how do you call it? The, the, my playground was at the academy. Wow. Sometimes yeah. we go just to hang around to play. It's not like we're learning <clears> secret <throat> moves. and No, <clears throat> there's nothing secret about it. Mm-hmm. It's just we hang out and we play. We hang out we just and watch and grew up watching and hanging out and take a class here and there. It's not people think, oh my God, they learn secret moves. No, no, no. <laughs> it's in the blood, basically, <clears throat> in the family. Yeah. We just get used to it. We just got used to it to watch people fighting, and for us, it was normal. Yeah. I remember seeing a fantastic photo of you years and years ago, and I'm pretty sure it was Helio Gracie and. It was either you and some of your brothers on the beach, and it looked like you were sort of sparring on the beach, and you're all very, very young. That's my brothers. Oh, it's your brothers. That was my yeah. brothers. I wasn't okay. even born there. No way. That it was, was that. The picture you're talking about is a black and white picture of my father yeah. with Horton, um, Helson, and Hollish. Amazing. So, wow, yeah. wow. Amazing. Are, are you still like close with with your brothers like at the moment? Because I understand you're, you're such a busy man, and you're all over the world, but you know, do you often see your brothers? Um, C is a little difficult. It's maybe once a year, okay. Because I travel so much and they're busy too. And yeah, of course. But we run into each other once a year, twice a year, but we talk all the time. Fantastic, wonderful, <laughs> lovely. Did you meet up for Christmas? <coughs> or, or, oh, yeah. it's so difficult. Yeah. The family became so big and so the world became a small place for the Graces. <laughs> True. It's like yeah. we have enough Graces to hold hands across <laughs> around the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many brothers do you have? We are seven brothers and two sisters. Okay. My father had nine kids. My uncle Carlos had 21 kids, 11 boys, 10 girls. 21 wow. children. Together, just the two of them, not counting Gosh. the other brother, the other uncles. Sure. Just the two of them, because the other ones kind of move away from, from my father and my uncle. Yeah. They did their own thing. But my father and my uncle, the ones that stick with Jiu-Jitsu, stick it together. So together, just the two of them, Uncle Carlos and my father, they had over 100 grandchildren. Over yeah. 50 great grandchildren. That was a while ago. So. That's an expensive Christmas. <laughs> well, you can't Can buy we? presents for everybody. No, 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 no. Where are they? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. And it's not even fair to buy. Some of them have 10 kids. It's like, dude, I can't buy for all your 10 kids. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you, the path you've got in jiu-jitsu, obviously, it was like set out for you, wasn't it? Or, or not set out, but it was sort of like because it was in your family, that was your path. Was that chosen for you, or did you ever have a, a thought that you didn't want to take that path as you never, were growing we up? Never, we never got forced to no? do anything. Mm-hmm. It's like we're free to do whatever. It's not, you see, there's like my kids, they're not forced to, they just they just have to know the basics, but they're not forced to be professional fighters and teaching jiu-jitsu. If they want to, great, it's an easy career. We got mm-hmm. it right there. We got the, we give you, the, like the same as you, give you the cheese, the bread, and the knife. So... <laughs> It's like, you just got to cut and eat it. <laughs> yeah. But if you decide to go somewhere else and dig your own 
you see vegetables, your own stuff, go ahead, go for it. So, we're, but we're not forced to be um, in jiu-jitsu. No. We just grew up around and you get <clears throat> to a certain ages, like that's what we do, that's what we like it. Yeah. So we follow the career. How, how was it like um, <coughs> or growing up, um, sort of you're getting teenager sort of years and people maybe started to know your name and they start to think we're going to challenge these guys. People knew the family name. Yeah, already, yeah. So the, in Brazil, by the time I, well, when I arrive <laughs> on Earth, on Earth yeah. my family already done so much. Yeah. It didn't start with me. Uh -huh. It's like, it's my father already fought, my uncles, my cousins, my brothers, yeah. everybody fought before me. Yeah. So I just, it was the face that brought to America to fight in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. But my uncles, my started with my uncles, my cousins, my brothers, my my father, they're the ones that did it before And, me. and were they just always <coughs> getting challenged by yeah. other people? Like, because that would, me personally, that would really scare me if I got a... Um, I don't know. Uh, my name was like, oh, he does jiu-jitsu. You know, let's let's go and try and fight this guy. I'd be like, oh man, I don't want this. I don't want this pressure all the time. You know, is it? Do, you, do you feel like that? No, at not all? at all. No, not at all. It's like we say, the Gracie name can be a curse or it can be a blast. Uh -huh. So it's a blessing if you know what you're doing. Sure. If you don't know how to fight, the, how to defend yourself, it's going to be a curse. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. being, let's say, Michael <clears throat> Jordan's son. Yeah. People come, Mike Tyson's son. People are going to come over and say, hey, so your old man boxes, your old yeah. man play basketball. Can you throw some hoops? Uh, no. It's like, yeah, sure. You I see, no, I can't box. It's like, wow, get out. It's like, you see. So, same thing on the family. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it can be a blast, it can be a curse. Uh -huh. So, but we don't take as a, um, we, are lo we love the challenge. Sure. <laughs> we love the challenge. Yeah. So people growing up, people want to know, I mean, I heard stories of my uncles, my father, people come in and challenge them and they'll take it on. It was, but people think that it's a misconception. People think that the graces are arrogant because they're challenging everybody, <clears throat> calling everybody out. We're not arrogant. It was not because we're calling everybody. We're just in a quest to find out which style is the best. Sure. Boxer coming in town says that his style can knock everybody out. I'm gonna go, hmm. Uh, let's put it to the test. Yeah, I want to see it. I don't believe it. How are you gonna knock me out? Yeah, you see, and then a wrestling, then a kickboxer, and a box is a, a kung fu, karate. They come in, that they start to talk, and we go, hold on, you can kill people with one punch. Uh, let's put it to the test. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to kill you. I don't mind. Let's, let's do it. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't see how this is going to go. You see, I, I can't see it going your way. Mm -hmm. So we're in a quest to find out which style of martial arts is the best. Because we can't teach something to the student that we don't believe, that we don't yeah, didn't put it to the test. It's, it's 30 <coughs> years, isn't it, this year? Oh, what? It's 30 years this year, isn't it, from the first UFC, is that oh, right? From the first UFC. First, yeah. <coughs> yeah. I feel like my family has <coughs> been... Course, yeah. Back in Brazil, yes. doing this for long, yeah. much longer yeah. than that. Oh yeah, yeah. You mentioned UFC one, and um, what was your <coughs> what was your earliest memory of the concept? W when did you first hear that there might be this tournament, and then also later on finding out that it was going to be you, in fact, who was going to be competing? They told me right off the bat, going to yeah. put you on it. Okay, sure. I've been waiting yeah. for my chance, <laughs> <laughs> and then the concept they came up with was a crazy ideas from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. From the beginning, it was like uh, they got together, my brother Horton, with um, um, Bob Myritz yeah. from Sema Ford Entertainment Group, the, the pay-per-view company, uh, Art Davey uh, promoting, then uh, um, the John Millers, the producer, director from old Conan the Destroyer, Dirty yeah. Harry, Clintus <laughs> Wood style yeah. stuff. And the concept that John Miller's coming up, the, the, the arena for the fight, he's like, let's put a platform and make a, like a pit with gators. <laughs> and if the guys fall, the gators will eat them. I was like, no, <laughs> what? That is was that actual that's real idea they had to yes. actually do that? That's James Bond style. I keep, I keep, I keep yeah. feeling, what if I fight a sumo wrestler and he just shoved me down? It's like, no. Oh, how about, how about sharks? It's like, <laughs> Lasers. Really? Same thing. <laughs> it's like a, a pit with sharks or piranhas. It's Brazilian piranhas. I was like, 
You can yeah, they came up with all kinds of ideas. Make a, 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 a cage with Bob wire. I was like, dude, imagine yeah. if a big guy picked me up and slammed me against the Bob wire. I'm stuck on the Bob <clears> wire. <throat> like, okay, let's put a, a, a electric fence. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, they came up with all kinds of ideas that was oh virtual. Gosh. I was like, yeah. no, I'm the one fighting. Don't get a big guy, push me against the fence, fry me over. <laughs> They're just trying to sell tickets, weren't they? They just wanted to make it entertainment, basically, yeah, rather than... That was John Miller. That was coming yeah. up with all kind of... I was like, no. So they came up with the Octagon. Yeah. So, yeah. Which they still have today, today, 30 yeah. years later. And I understand Dana White and the Fatitas got involved <coughs> after the fact, but it's still crazy. It's still an Octagon. Still one of the most popular sports in the whole world. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. you helped start all that. It's, it's crazy, well, no? I didn't start it. I was just chose to represent Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. yeah. It, w was there any particular reason why you were selected and say not Hickson or, or any of the other Gracies? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. The baby-faced assassin. <laughs> Dude, it was going to be on national TV, pay-per-view all over the country, the world, and you're going to put an ugly brother on the game. <laughs> he, Come on. He said it. It's by yeah, the looks, yeah. man. I didn't say anything about yeah, Hickson. Yeah. <laughs> they pick by looks, okay? okay. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> just, just to bring it back to this, those barbed wire ideas, what do you think of these, um, these spin-off sort of things from the UFC now, like these slap tournaments and... Um, What's the other one where they have like nine on nine guys fighting in like a really? riot? Yeah, yeah. They do it in Russia, don't they? In Russia, that, you want to in Russia I, I, Poland, I heard, but I haven't seen it yet. Yes, the six guys versus six, six, six guys, <laughs> and it's bare knuckle, full on like hooligan fights. And this, this like you can watch it on YouTube, I think. All so I gotta look, I, I, I heard about it, but I have I heard that the slap I haven't followed much, so mm -hmm. yes, oh, I can't give my opinion it's wild. on that. It's Fair it's enough. But wild. stand there and take a hit, it's like wow, it's like crazy. They hold something, don't they? And then it's just take a Massive slap, the biggest slaps you've ever seen. No, I don't think they hold no. anything. Oh, hands hands behind, yeah, hands yeah, behind yeah, the yeah. back. First, yeah, yeah, hands yeah. behind the back. <laughs> yeah. Goodness me. <laughs> but the six on six or oh yes, ten on might ten. be nine on nine or something <clears throat> like that, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's and then so one, crazy. Crazy. there's like one referee, and when <clears throat> someone gets knocked out, they they obviously respect that. <laughs> they leave him alone. But then yeah. there's like three guys on one guy, you know, and the numbers go down until they're all tapping or they're out. <laughs> wild, absolutely wild. Go I gotta check that out. Yeah, yeah, you want to have a look at that. <laughs> Going back to the first UFC, and I guess any time you walked into the cage or the ring, like what's going through your mind? Nothing. 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 I'm not thinking about eating dinner that night. Can you explain that a bit more? As in, like, obviously, I'm not of us. thinking about going home. Might break your neck and die. Okay. <laughs> That's that's really Let's scary. Go. That's it's, it's, it's for, for, for me, that's a really scary concept to try and imagine. That's the um, I don't believe yeah. I cannot see. That's the idea. I cannot see how the opponent can beat me. Yeah, I trust the Gracie Jiu Jitsu technique yeah. so much that I don't see it, and I cannot see how they beat me. I've trained for this. I prepare for this. Yeah, been through this before. So, what if he breaks your neck and you die? Salavi. Yeah, had a good life. Very true. Yeah, what a mindset. So I mean, and the the, the jiu jitsu <coughs> completely worked. I'm not thinking about going home, so I'm not thinking about anything. Mm -hmm. Not thinking about nothing. Zero. Wow. Empty mind. Because sitting here, like, you know, you're you're a happy guy, and I've seen, I look back at your old videos, and like, you've just got this look when you're looking <laughs> across the cage at the people. And you're just, <laughs> there's nothing going to stop you. It's just blank. It's dead. It's nothing inside. It's like, <sighs> it's like, yep. Like a shark. Like it's yeah. just you and me inside this cage. The door locks. It's like, let's do this. Let the reflex take over. It's giving me goosebumps. There's, so, there's not yeah. even time to think about it. If you have to think about the move, you're too late. It's just reaction. Like I was saying today in class, we're creatures of habit. You react to it. If you have to think about it, it's too late. Mm-hmm. Did you do any sort of special, I know it's a long time ago now, but did you do any sort of special training for the lead up to UFC 1? Because obviously you <coughs> trained jiu-jitsu all of your life since you were a child all the way up. But you did, did you do anything specific thinking, oh, I'm going to fight kickboxers, I'm going to fight a boxer? Did you, or did you just, it was just the Gracie jiu-jitsu and you just, that was it? I had students that practice kickboxing, judo, wrestling, kung fu, and I spar with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. do your thing, I'll, I'm going to do my thing, let's go. 
Mm -hmm. just to, that's the guys, my sparring partners or my students. Yeah. Or teach a class. Teach a class and just teach everybody how to get in a clinch, jump in and do it over and over with the guys. I guess that's why when you were running down to the cage in that like hoisty train with all your family, like holding shoulder to shoulder and you're coming down, I guess you've been doing months and months of sparring of all these different disciplines. So I guess no wonder you were so confident going in because you've done multiple rounds, multiple fights. I, yeah, I grew tools. up, I've been around, I know what a fight was. Most of the guys back then, back then was a style against a style. Yeah. So a karate guy would never been taken down, you see, to no. the ground. So he, he would just know. fight karate guys. So he think, okay, <clears throat> nobody ever gonna, there was a misconception, nobody, the boxer, nobody ever gonna get in a clinch and take me down. I'll knock them out, I'll hit them, the karate guys, I'll kick, I'll knee, I'll spin, I'll do this, and they'll never get a hold of me. Mm -hmm. They could not imagine. You see, but I already imagine, I seen, I've been to that training. When they tried to hit me and I got in, took them down and submit, sub, submit him, submit, submit them, the yeah. opponent. So. It's, it's the weight class as well. There wasn't any weight classes either, was there? I mean, you, you were <laughs> fighting people who were four times your weight, maybe? There was no time limit. No time limit. Yeah. No weight division. No, the only rules was no biting and no eye gouging. So no rules. There's no uniform either. It's like you could just wear, it's wear whatever, whatever you wanted yeah. to, yeah. And but no weapons. So, <laughs> 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 but no time limit, no weight division, no rules, no gloves. So, yep, it was How raw. Thing. It was <laughs> really Seriously raw. raw. Like, I mean, yeah. It's, it's but my father way. never told me go in there and beat up your opponents. Actually, my father before the fights, you used to tell me, do not hurt your opponents. I was like, Dad, it's a fight. Come on, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, just get in a clinch, take them down, subdue them nicely, use the technique of jiu-jitsu, but don't hurt anybody. Don't make anybody bleed. Don't hit anybody. It's like, but they're trying to rip my head off. It's like, just control the fight, win without hurting them. Total different order than my mother. My mother was like, I want to see some blood. I want you to send them to the hospital. My <laughs> mother's mean. I want you to hurt them. I don't want to forget your father. Your father doesn't know what he's talking about. I was like, that doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think a little bit of your mother's side came out to, today in the seminar when you were teaching a certain move and you said, enjoy it. Take your time a little yeah. bit. Let, <laughs> let, let them feel the pain. And I was thinking, maybe that's your mother's side coming <laughs> out a little bit. That's you know? mom's side. <laughs> yeah. Torture them a little bit. Enjoy, more. enjoy when you're hurting, when you're squeezing their necks and choking their mouths, <laughs> watching them pass out. <laughs> Whisper on their ear, go to the light. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you watch MMA anymore or do you oh, watch? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Amazing. Big fan. Yeah, because I, I guess I, I do mean, know. I don't watch every single no. weekend and every fight. No. Whenever I can, when the big fights. Yeah. You see, some, some of the guys that I like to watch more than others. Yeah. So. Who are some of your sort <laughs> of favorite guys that maybe you'd like watching? Charles them? Oliveira. Fantastic. He's good to watch. Fantastic fighter. Yeah. Very technical. Very yeah. Fabricio Verdun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you see Nick, Nate Diaz, the Diaz brothers. Yeah. Oh, They're yeah. fighters, you see. Yeah. But it's not, um, I don't I don't watch every weekend. No, no. He's the main fights. Yeah. yeah. You see a guy like Conor McGregor always brings a name up, always talking. You see, it's always entertaining. It's good entertainment yeah, to watch him fight. Is. He yeah. puts up a show, man. Yeah. He does. It's <coughs> funny you mentioned Charles Oliveira. He's one of my favorite fighters, Charles Oliveira. And I really hope he gets the rematch with, with Islam. And Islam I really, is good. Islam he's is good. very, very good. But guy. Islam is good. I love, <coughs> Who won the first I love, um, Islam won the first one. Yeah. But, but, Charles has lost one fight in the last like 13 fights. And wow. he, he won his last fight as well against Dariush. So I'm really hoping they're going to put together Charles Oliveira against Islam too, and I'll be oh, pulling they for will. and I'll yeah. be pulling for Charles. Eventually, they will. Not to. Yeah. Similar to um, Fabricio Verdum submitting Fedor. Yes, that was great. It was. <laughs> so it was the first time he'd been beaten, wasn't it, Fedor? Fedor never got choked out. Never. Yep. Straight into it. Was it. The first time walking right to triangle. I was just yeah. As soon as you said Verdum, I was like, oh yeah, Fedor. <laughs> that was a, that was an amazing match. I remember that. Um. <sighs> I just, I just go. I want to sort of get into your mindset a little bit as well. Just talking about fighting, and is there anything that scares you? 
What is fear? You tell me. Fear doesn't exist. It's a product of your imagination. Different is stupidity. Don't go in the ocean. There's sharks out there. I don't care. You're going to get eaten by sharks. That's stupidity. It's not a question of not having fear. I guarantee you there's no sharks in this ocean. Done. We're going to jump in. So, you see, you can touch this lion. I guarantee it won't bite you. Okay. I'll be right there. Now, do not touch that lion because he will eat you. I don't, I'm not afraid. I'm not scared. It's like that's stupidity to me. Yeah. <clears throat> so, fear doesn't exist. Surprise. Kids, little kids don't have fear. We parents are the ones that raise them with fear. Get down. Don't climb over there. You're going to fall. And the kids grow up like, I've, I've decided to climb up. No, don't climb. You're going to get, going to fall. They're going to get hurt. Okay, it's scared. They're not scared to put a hand on the fire. They don't know it's hot. They'll put it. Touch it. Okay, they'll, they'll put their hands on the fire. But we're the ones that say, no, don't touch the fire. It's going to burn your hands. It's going to look like this. It's going to be mad. It's going to, oh my God, it's going to be. It's like we create that fear. And the kids grow up afraid of the fire, afraid of climbing things or we don't we get ra we raised with no fear hmm. but different wow. than stupidity that's a great way of dividing it <coughs> <coughs> dividing yeah. it between <laughs> some things that are really stupid to do but yeah yeah because i'm very conscious of that as well like because i've got two young children i've got a six-year-old and a four-year-old and i'm i'm <clears throat> i try not to be that dad where i'm like oh be careful or you know don't touch or but then you kind of can't help <coughs> yourself as well because They've got to learn, but then don't want them to hurt themselves when either. When they so. fall, they won't pass through the ground. They'll stop and hit the ground. So let it fall. <laughs> <laughs> but then, I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. they'll yeah. learn. <laughs> yeah. You live, you live very close to a road though, right? Yeah. So like, let's take a road, you know, do you set up, you, you'd have to set a boundary with a road, right? Yeah, because I know, yeah. That's instant death to but me. But that might be stupidity, like what Hoist is saying, like yeah. some things you look at a certain way, mm. but... Your, your child just climbing on a climbing <coughs> frame or whatever, you're right. I mean, yeah, if they fall two, three feet, probably going to be okay, aren't yeah. they? You teach yeah. them. When you get the road, look, make sure there's yeah. no cars. Yeah. <coughs> so take the but stupidity I away. I tell my kids growing up, all my kids were like, it's my job as a father to get you out of trouble. If you don't do your job, I can do mine. Sure. Go. Get in trouble. <laughs> now, don't go rob a bank because you're going to spend the night in jail. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> do you see? It's like, come on, use your common sense. Yep. Go be kids. Go do it. You see, grow up. Nice. So, How old are your children now, Royce? Now they're 26, 25, uh, 21, and 17. Wow. You're one of your sons in the military, is that right? Yes. Yeah. And when did he sign up? Um, about a year ago. Yeah? Enjoying it? Yep. Yeah. Does, does it worry you that he's in the military and that he might have to go to like a conflict somewhere, potentially? Does that, did you ever think about that? No, nope. don't worry about that. I'm just proud of him that he's in there. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, I just think from a dad perspective, like I'm, I guess, a little bit worrier sometimes. If my son was in the military, yeah, that's probably one of the first things I'd think about. But no, that's awesome. If whatever happens, it happens. Yeah. My father used to say, if I'm, like, I'm travel all the time. So sometimes I get to the airport and the flight got canceled. And I see people freaking out. My God, I can't believe this is outrageous. I can't believe you guys canceled the flight. My God, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. I'm like, aren't you guys happy that they found the problem while we're still on the ground? <laughs> Imagine me there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got a problem over here. Uh, engine malfunction. That would be a problem. That's a big problem. You see, so it's like, hey, I'm canceled. No problem. Yeah, yeah I'm alive. <laughs> It's like people live so stressed, man. Mm. I'm not planning on missing the, my appointment on the other side where I was supposed to go. But if I couldn't go, if I can't make it, hey, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, It got canceled for a reason. I was not meant to be on that plane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I got stuck in traffic. Not even the airport, the, the plane's on time, but I got stuck in traffic. There's never traffic. I got stuck in traffic and I show up late and the flight is canceled. Not fly. The flight left and I, I, I couldn't make, I was not mad to be on that flight. That's the way I look at it. Things happen for a reason. You're it's talking good. about your nice. <clears throat> traveling all over the world, which you obviously do. Hard to answer this question probably, but 
Where is your favorite place to be in the world? Not in a specific order, but Aberystwyth, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you Aberystwyth? You almost had me then. <laughs> Aberystwyth for three days of the, four days of the year. Oh, it's great. Summer. <laughs> it's always sunny. In yeah. summer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> four days, summer. <laughs> Actually, global warming is four days. It used to be three days. Now it's four That's days. Four, yeah, wow. Yeah. It's very Ooh. hot here. Today. That's hot, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, Dick. Not yeah. a specific order, but Hawaii, anywhere in Hawaii. Yeah. Bali. Nice. Kuj Beach in Australia. Yeah. Uh, Brazil. The beaches in Brazil. Rio. Anywhere, Rio, down south. And Palau. Palau. What all those places have in common? Nice weather, I would say. Beaches, tropical beaches. beaches. Yeah. yeah. What about, <laughs> so you're not interested in going to maybe like Canada on a snowboarding holiday maybe? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get slapped. <laughs> I'll go yeah. for three, four days. Yeah, not for like. Two and weeks. I gotta come back. You like the yeah. beach. You, yes. like, you like the sun. Yes, me I'll too. go. Me yeah. too. Yeah. I can snowboard, ski. I can do all. I'm sure you can. But, but I will not stay there for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. drive me crazy. I'll go. I'll freeze. <laughs> and, and what about what about hobbies outside of jujitsu and say fighting? Have you got any hobbies that aren't really yeah, that's, related that's to that's any of that? You know, yes, but you guys would not understand what I'm talking about. Try us <laughs> shooting. Oh right, okay. Uh, you live, you live in America, yeah. right? Yeah, you live in America. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. You guys would not understand what I'm talking about. No, I shoot better than I can fight. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you said that today in the cinema actually. And but yeah, do you like going to the sh do you like going to the range, the shooting range, and yeah, what what is it? What is it about those those guns? What what would you like about the it? Concentration. The, yeah, the, the focus. You can't be having a major conversation, talking, 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 shooting. No, you shut down, narrow down. Yeah, and you can always make it faster, better, more accurate. It doesn't matter how fast you are. Yeah, you always try to shave off a fraction of a second. It doesn't matter how accurate you are. You're always trying to make it. Better, more better. accurate. So it's it's always room for improvement. It doesn't matter. You're always trying to beat the old time, the, the more accuracy and wow. You know, have you got like a favorite weapon, like a or is it you know a handgun? All of them. That all, <laughs> oh my goodness. All of them. <laughs> wow, that's insane. Man. That's mad. <laughs> Do you go to like the um, the gun ranges in in Vegas? I know they got some good gun ranges um, there. And I have not been there for a while. But that's your arsenal. Awesome wow, one? some the old bitch your... is missing about is missing about at least fifteen. Oh, you got a bow there as well. Is that in America? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. So what? Can you <laughs> explain like the the gun rules and everything? Because that obviously that's all legal. Like, can you have as many as you want? Yep. See, to me, that seems a bit crazy though as well because. It, I know. It's, it's, I don't it, want to go it, down the street. No, it's a very touchy subject. subject, subject, subject. Know, yeah. just, yeah. Because obviously we don't have. We're not. We're not we we can't do it here in the UK. We don't. We're not allowed to be armed with anything. No. Hold on, but now now this why we have guns? Yeah. It's not to protect against the bad guys to rob my house. That's why they have the cops. Yeah. Yeah. It's not to protect against. A Russian invasion or whatever the Chinese invading some Vietnamese in Vietnam invading the United States It's not because there's the army for that. Mm -hmm. We have guns to protect ourselves against the government. Take the guns away from the people. The government can do whatever they want, and there's nothing the people can do about it. Where are they going to go? Protest on the streets? Everybody walk around, letting white. Uh, pigeons go hmm. to protest for peace, whatever. It's like that's that's huge. It's, it's protected. From, it's, from we, we, that's how America looks at. It. Yeah, wow. we look at. We have guns to protect ourselves against the government. So wow. So I've never been explained like yeah. That I've, I've never had that no. explanation <clears throat> at, like at all. It, it's I've always I've always heard. I want my gun in my house to protect my house against intruders. You Most know? people do it for that yeah but <clears throat> the reason the real reason behind that's why we have the freedom second amendment to buy guns and yeah. arm society yeah. is the to right protect to ourselves arms. against the government wow mm. if the government take all the guns away they can raise the price of the gas nobody can talk about it nobody can do anything they can shut down the country nobody can do anything about it 
True. There's no revo- how can you do a revolution if they don't have no weapons? That's true. With yeah. pitchforks and knives and machetes. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, and the, well, and the government and the government have all the guns. <laughs> But all the people that make all these laws against the guns, they all have bodyguards, security guards with guns. Yeah, you Hold do on. see these strange. Um, How can you tell me not to have a gun to protect my family, but you have a guy that protects your family with a gun? Mm. Yeah, double standards. It's unfair. Tell Man. me, no, you can't have a gun. Why? Because you cannot. How am I going to protect myself? Oh, it doesn't matter. But you have an armed guard on you, or two or three, yeah. two to three armed bar, uh, bodyguards arm. It's like, but I cannot have, I cannot protect. Who is going to defend my family? So, hmm. it's gonna be a very tricky thing over the over the coming years because America is like. I'm sure there's some other countries with some similarities, but it seems like. America, because they have the Second Amendment and lots of other different reasons, <coughs> it's going to be very difficult to enforce any form of gun control there, isn't it? Because, I don't know. It's but do you know, do you guys know, that, and you can search that, uh, medical malpractice kills two times more than all the guns. All oh, right, okay, yeah. Imagine, so the, get wo- media, imagine the world without doctors. But on the end of the day, they do more good than harm. Yeah. Course, but yeah. medical yeah. malpractice kills yeah. twice or more. Now, for surprising, knives kills, I think, three to four times more than all the guns together. Imagine the world, a knife and hammer, sorry, knife and hammers, yeah. kills okay. four times more than mm-hmm. all the, the guns. Imagine the world without knife and a hammer. Difficult what? to cut your vegetables. It would be <laughs> difficult to build a house, <laughs> like, man, without a hammer. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Or, or any... It's a, it's, it, we go back to cave times. Like, yeah. So the gun's not because the guy got, I got a gun, I'm going to go kill. The gun don't kill people. People kill people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's refreshing to hear this... Um, <clears throat> bit of insight because we we get we watch the news we get you know the news is just this much information really isn't it you know we see the headline we go into the story a little bit and it's like oh my god not another one not another one but it's good to have this insight about it's more than that it's people don't want to see it the people don't want to talk about it yeah so they say in europe there is no crime that's what we hear in america yeah yeah there's no crime in europe i can i i just I can tell you a dozen right off the bat, right off my head that happens yeah. to people that I know. It's like with knife, a simple knife, with breast knuckle. It's, you see, not even guns. There's no gun crime comparing to America. I understand. But that doesn't mean there's Everything no else. crime. Yeah. <laughs> what, kids walk around here in England with acid? Yeah, they the do. hell does that? I know it's crazy. No, it's you see, crazy. throwing acid on people's face. Yeah. So it's like there's no crime. Is that not a crime? Yes. One so, of the worst things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. knife. People are getting stabbed and getting acid poured on them all the time. You see. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. like there is crime everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Poor. <laughs> Going from one tough subject to another one, really, but you know, the the pandemic obviously affected everyone in different ways. I think you know, as you didn't personally, affect me, uh, but your business, <laughs> <laughs> business wise, did it <laughs> affect you guys, not me? Yeah, <laughs> where were you during it? Yeah, yeah where were you, America? You? I was hunting. <laughs> I don't know if we want to talk about this. I <laughs> love <laughs> the pandemic no because way. there was nobody on the road. I love my that, God, that the city was too. empty. Yeah. I can drive a six-hour drive to go to the mountains to go hunt. You told me four. It was like there was zero traffic, cruising, no problem. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we hunt. Yeah, around we went here. We hunt, spent time in the woods. My sons and I, we hunt. It's like, came back. It's like, my God, this is awesome. Yeah. We should have more <laughs> pandemic more often. There's no traffic. Nobody's riding. We're like, <laughs> everybody's so afraid to go to the beach. Everybody's so afraid to go. It's like, eh. But well, we weren't allowed to, were we? No. We were in yeah. a full lockdown. Like so, for several months, we were we had to stay in <clears> our <throat> house. Yeah, yeah. couldn't Just leave. One but, exercise, <laughs> one form of exercise yeah. a day, and then you were meant to stay within like a mile of your house. 
Ai. Crazy. Yeah. But. They had such a thing in America too, but me no hablo inglés, amigo. Me, love <laughs> <laughs> what, what me no state understand, you see. Me what no state understand. were you in, Hoyce? Sorry, me no understand. <laughs> I leave my houses. I don't know. Me don't understand. See, the accent becomes very heavy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was like, sorry. I don't know. It's like... <laughs> So you kind of continued to do kind of what you wanted throughout that sort of pandemic. But I think what Dave was on about was particularly like, say, jujitsu schools, because it's such close quarters combat. Maybe they had to shut certain ones. I don't know. In the pandemic in America, mm. you know, were, were there academies that had to close? A lot of people found a way around. Okay. Loopholes. Oh. Okay. If you have equipment that you film and put in YouTube, you can have up to six, ten people in the room working. So okay. shut down the windows. A lot of guys shut down the windows so nobody see it because the government was <clears> teaching <throat> people on how to tell on him, on, on each yeah. other. Yeah. Hey, uh, my neighbor over here, he have people at his house. It's like, really? Yeah. If you, so they were they're they're encouraging people to yeah. tell on each other. It's to like police, <coughs> police each other. <coughs> themselves. Yeah. So, sort of like big, big brother But hold stuff. on, but hold on. If you got your vaccine, your vaccine, you got your mask. Why do I have to get my vaccine in my mask? Why are you afraid to get next to me? So the vaccine, the mask doesn't protect you. The vaccine doesn't protect you. So hold on. Both of us have to have the vaccine to be protected. Both of us have to have the mask. If you got the mask, you got the, all the shots. Why are you worried about me? I think maybe in the future, <laughs> yeah, a, a, lot, a lot of things will come out and then we'll learn more about so. it. But it'd be interesting to see. see. So I was arguing with people all the time. Yeah. I don't mind. Let's do it. Let's mm -hmm. go. You <laughs> see. So hold on. You got your vaccine. You got your mask on. Why do I have to have my vaccine in my mask? If you're safe, is the vaccine safe? Is the vaccine protects you? So why are you worried about me <laughs> if I talk or not? <laughs> I think yeah I think I think it really did sort of divide a lot of people which, is, which isn't a good Definitely. thing isn't it to divide people is bad so but that's the beginning a lot of people of were, the, of, of controlling taking faith mm -hmm. take religion out take uh, um, dividing them black against white yeah like Morgan Freeman said stop talking about it yeah mm -hmm. you see Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Yeah. Racism. Stop talking about it. So you give him one month to talk about black. He was like, Sh I don't like this yeah. black month. It's like, it should be forever. Yeah. You give yeah. Yeah, always. Yeah. It should be always. Not mm -hmm. so, so they're dividing. They're implanting on people. Divide. Divide and conquer. Yeah. The old style. The old ways. Yeah. <laughs> the ways, yeah. <laughs> Controlling. Interesting. <coughs> Going back to like your your fighting days, do, do you miss it? Yes, yeah. I miss training camp. Hmm. Training camp is the best. It's like that's the most fun. The fights are just another training day. So training camp is the best. It's about me. It's a very selfish profession. Yeah, it's not about them. It's about me. Yeah. So, and did it change when <coughs> you had children? <coughs> Did it change at all when you had children? Did it did it nope. make you think differently at all when you had children? Not at all. Not at all. I never brought my work home. No. Come home. But that's why two, three months prior to the fight, and as soon as I signed for the fight, I'll move out of the house. I'll rent a separate house, go live somewhere else. Come home on the weekend, maybe to say hi to them, visit them. You see, but move out. So you could fully concentrate. Yep. Yep. I can't be coming home and, uh, honey, uh, can you watch the kids? <clears throat> I got to run to the supermarket. Can you go to the supermarket and buy this? No. It's like, to us, it was a full-time job. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so it's a, that's what we did. She understood. It. What was your favorite fight? And I'm sure you've been asked this loads of times, but I'm still, <coughs> I'm still interested in what was um, your favorite or your favorite performance? First UFC, winning three fights in one night with no yeah. time limit, no weight division, no gloves. Yeah. Everything goes. No, no, stop. Cancel that. Second UFC, winning four fights in one night. Yeah. No time limit, no weight division, no gloves. No. No, no, no. Hold on. There's one better. <laughs> Against Kimo. 
I was going to mention oh, 250 pounds. I carried the cross in. Pure beast with a pharmacy. My God. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching that when I was <laughs> That went 15, fast. 16. That went woo, quick over. <laughs> 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 yep. No, there's one better than that. Dan Severn. Oh. 265 All-American rest. What he did to the guys before me, smashing them around until he ran into me. I had to tap in the choke. It's like... No, this one, hold on, cancel that one too. <laughs> uh, List. Sakuraba. Yes. Fought for an hour and a half. An hour, it was hour and 45 because it was 15, six rounds of 15 minutes with two minute rest. So it stood an hour, hour and 45. Crazy. So, what was his weight? A long time. Uh, about 190. Pound. Similar to you then, or nine. maybe a little bit bigger. We were about 180. Yeah. 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 No, there's one better than that. Uh, Akibono, six foot eight, four hundred and ninety pounds. Oh That's my goodness, two hundred and twenty kg. So <laughs> <laughs> all of them. It's hard to pick one. Hard to <laughs> was pick that one. That was the arm bar, wasn't it? You, was the the shoulder arm? lock and That's wrist it. lock. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> A lot of amazing. Because he landed on top of you as well. You were in, you pulled. I him pulled him on top of me. Yes. Did you, did you plan to do that? Of course. Why would you want someone that what that heavy? I know that Gracie Jiu Jitsu is gonna do its thing but then <laughs> someone that size <laughs> the thing is if you're fighting a guy like this big I hit him he smiled hit me back knocked me out yeah so the plan is he doesn't know how to swim I know how to swim I tie myself up with him and jump in the water <laughs> who do you think is going to survive me or him <laughs> yeah. he doesn't know how to swim no <laughs> he didn't I know how to swim as soon as I, I brought him to my game to, my, to the ground so as soon as I got him on the ground, then I wrap him around, tie him up like a knot, <laughs> finish him. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I pick your brains a little bit about your diet? So I, I don't know whether you follow like the Gracie diet or whether you, <clears throat> because I imagine, yes, I you know. What, yeah, can I ask you, what, what, what sort of thing do you? Gracie diet, to be simple, is, is, is more of a, it's not exactly a diet, it's like eating habits. Okay. We yeah. eat everything. We just combine the food towards our ease digestion. Okay. It's like when do you get sick, if you think about it. You get sick when you stress out the work and the kids are not doing good in school or whatever, getting picked or whatever. And the house that your car that you put it for sale is not selling and you're working out and you're working extra hours and you're not sleeping enough and you then you sit down and, and you eat it. What's a typical meal around here? Um, beans, fish and chips, fish, fish and chips, and, fish chips, and, chips yeah. and, and you burgers, eat Sunday uh, roast. <laughs> you <laughs> eat a, a, a one of those big meals that you sit down and go, oh my god, whew, yeah. I'm tired now. Uh, and you go take a nap, and you wake up and you got a cold because <clears throat> your body, your, your immune system was running low. And then you eat that that little bit of energy that you have left over goes down to digest the heavy food that you put on your body. They have food. We eat everything, by the way. Okay. We just combine the food towards our ease digestion. Mm -hmm. So the heavy food that you eat, the little bit of energy that you have goes down to digest. Now your immune system goes down to zero. You take a nap. You wake up and you got a cold. And what do you do? You blame the air conditioning you was on. <laughs> it was too hot. My God, it was 70 <laughs> degrees outside. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was like sunny showed up and I got a cold because of the sun. It was raining. It was, you make all the excuses possible, not on what you ate. Could you just uh, mm. mention a couple of examples of like, just for anybody listening or watching, mm. just like what's a simple, simple Gracie diet meal? Um, in America, typical meal. It's like, let's say, not typical, but it's a, a meal. It's burgers, a burger with French fries. Yeah. The bread and the potato will not go together. They're two starches will make it very heavy for you to digest. Sure. Typical Brazilian meal. It's black beans, starch, rice, starch, fried yuca flour, starch, potato salad, starch, and meat. You see? So it's like it's a it's a, the, the starches the mixing together is gonna be very heavy. And then sure. they eat dessert, a watermelon for dessert. It becomes mm -hmm. atomic bomb on your body. <laughs> <laughs> you see. So if time. I eat if I eat there's not just too much carb. You can eat bread. If I eat the burgers, I would not eat the fries. Sure. Or I want to eat the fries. The kids growing up, it's like, I want to eat the fries, dad. Okay, take the bread out. Don't eat the bread. 
Sure. You can't mix two carbs because it becomes heavy on the digestion. That's a simple example like this. Cool. So we don't eat <clears throat> two different carbs. Not the quantity. You can eat a lot of pasta. Yeah. But if I'm eating pasta, I can eat the bread because they're the same. But if I'm eating the pasta, I will not eat rice. Right. The seed. Okay. I will not eat uh, uh, potato with the pasta. Or if I eat rice, I won't eat potato or French fries. If I eat potato, baked potato, mashed potato, they're all the same. French fries, they're all the same. So yeah. I can eat them all, you see, because they're one. They're one thing, one, thing, one yes. carb. Gotcha. That's interesting. <laughs> that's, interesting. That's really yeah. interesting. Um, it, and you, you like your honey? <clears throat> honey is good. Honey is good. I love honey. Yeah. <laughs> Nice Do you pot, just have yeah. a spoon? Yeah. Like, hop, straight in. Yep. <laughs> Don't like mix it in your water or anything like that. Nope. nope. Straight in. Straight in. Do you, do you just train? Um, not just train jujitsu now, but is that your key? Or do you do like yoga? Do you do running, cycling, anything else? I do everything. Everything. <laughs> nice. Do you surf? From I done a couple <clears throat> times. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I Hopefully. try everything from jumping from a plane to scuba diving to. Jumping, I was just in Hawaii about a week ago. There's a company, a friend of mine's company over there. Um, we jump from a helicopter oh into gosh. the ocean, gear up, and then go scuba diving. <laughs> no way. Wow. That's wild. That sounds <laughs> extreme. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That sounds extreme. We jump in a helicopter, get in a helicopter, fly over Waikiki beaches, and oh. get out there by Diamond Head. Like just jump from a helicopter, jump inside the ocean, gear up, yep, and, and go scuba diving. Down. Some amazing, <laughs> some, uh, <laughs> wow. some shipwrecks down there, some turtles and oh, yeah, nice. yep. What what would be hard to describe because you've got such an amazing life, I suppose. But what would be like a typical week for Hoist Gracie? Like, we, 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 I mean, sometimes you wouldn't always get on a plane, but a typical one week or two week, w would there be lots of traveling normally involved? A lot of traveling. Yeah, I've I've been in England for. Uh, 11 days already? 10 ah, days? No, right. I've been okay. for nine days, nine days. Yeah. One day in each city. Yeah. So one day in each city. If I have a chance, of, if I have time, I'll stop. I love to see the castles, go check out the castle. Yeah. You see, the guy's a, the guy driving with me, Chris Pritchard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, dude, I'm on jet lag without leaving my my country. <laughs> I'm on jet lag in England, in Wales. <laughs> How can that be? I'm <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> you don't stop. My God. It's like one day in each city. It's like... <laughs> So it's like, no, I'm always traveling, seeing things, and the yeah. guys know what I like. So go to Dubai, jump off a plane, skydive in Dubai by the Palm, and then jump, go to Kuwait, and just do the, the surf behind the boat. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, wakeboarding. Wakeboarding yeah. behind the mm -hmm. boat over there. And you wow. see, and then go to Israel, go do something different, go ride horses, and there's always something different go to a beautiful beach in Portugal and and to see there's always something going on <laughs> busy life incredible sounds life. amazing life incredible yeah. life yeah. I, lo I tell travel, people travel. I love my life <laughs> yeah. it don't touch good. it don't change anything leave it like it is if you touch anything you will ruin everything <laughs> <laughs> don't touch it leave it alone <laughs> amazing yeah that is um, I know we're jumping around a little bit here Hoist, but I know we're sort of conscious of you're, you're very time limited but um, what are you most proud of my kids <clears throat> nice my kids, yeah, just want to hang around long enough to see them grow older. Yeah, so for sure. If not, eh, good to go. Being there, done that, everything. Mm. So, yep. It's a great I've answer. Had, <laughs> I've, had the, I've had the pleasure of meeting one of your um, sons, I think. I think he came over when you talked. Yes, yeah. the oldest one. Yeah, wonderful. That was really, yep. that was really nice. He fights for Bellator now. Does wow. he? All oh, right, okay. Yeah. Wow. What's Amazing. that like, watching them going into the cage? I gotta separate myself. Yeah. In, in between being a father and being worried about it. And he trains, so whatever happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can be, I, I'm not the person that worry about it and lose his sleep worrying. You see, it's whatever happens, it happens. As long as he does his homework. Mm -hmm. So as long as he doesn't stay home and just go do it. Where, where does he train, <clears throat> the, um, you, your son who fights for Bellator? Um, he does different training camps, different people, different okay. coaches. There's Marvin from uh, Wild Card in LA. Yeah. Um, Frey Roach's gym. Boxing gym. <coughs> Wild Card. Boxing. Yeah. He trains wrestling with Kenny uh, Johnson from uh, uh, Black House. Yeah. He trains different jujitsu with some of my black belts in LA and with me, of course. 
So the striking with Ivan, Chris helped him out a little bit. Uh, so Chris come from the karate background, so they, they help him out with the stand up. So different places, different people, always chasing, always getting better, always this James Trauma. I've been with James, James is a strength coach, been with him forever. Yeah. Um, f- since I started fighting, since I since I no, I've been with James for yeah, after the UFC since 98, I think. Okay. I got together with James and still trained with him. And yeah. So now my son is trained with him. <clears throat> so strength coach. It's great. Do you train <coughs> any, um, do you train any, any fighters anymore? No. No? Training fighters is like a babysitting job. Man. <laughs> it's so hard. I it's bet. It's not easy. No. So I don't have the time to sit down and, see and babysit the guys, man. Got to constantly be up on top of them and yeah. reminding them and dragging them and come over here. You got to go over there. It's a schedule, man. It's yeah. hard. I know because I do that to my son. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, I remember y- your family trained <coughs> um, Brian Ortega. Ortega, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Brian Ortega. I can't yeah. remember. I think that must have been one of your brothers, I think, is it? Nephews. Nephews. Nephew, sorry. Yeah. Horion. Uh, no. Uh, Henna. Huron and Henna. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He's a fantastic <laughs> fighter as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think your son feels pressure then, having yeah. the Gracie name? He's trying to teach him not to feel that pressure. That's yeah, the hard yeah. part. You see, he feels the pressure, but you got to learn how to disconnect that. So. Yeah. That was um, that was one of my sort of questions. Is um, this is so, so we're we're a podcast that started because of uh, mental health of men. Um, how do you? <coughs> I, you probably answered this through just a couple of your sentences earlier, but how do you manage your everyday sort of, how do you check yourself? How do you be okay? You know, how do you... I, I, I understand life. Yeah. I understand. Like I said about the plane. If my father used to say, if I'm walking down in New York City and a piano falls from the top of the building on my head, dude, it's mad to happen. Sure. You can't fight that. You see, I'm not standing there and saying, drop the piano, <coughs> see if you're going to hit me or miss me. That's stupidity. So you got to understand life. People people get too stressed out with everything, man. Mm-hmm. You see, it's like today's day, everybody gets so stressed with everything. Yeah, In Brazil, true. they have a joke. A husband comes home and goes, um, and can't sleep in late night and walk around back and forth in the room. And the wife goes, uh, what happened? What, what come to bed? I can't. Why not? I don't have the money to pay for the rent tomorrow. It's due tomorrow and I don't have the money. I'm stressed. I don't know. I can't sleep thinking about that. She goes, hold on. I'll take care of it. Pick up the phone. Call the landlord. What are you doing? You can't call the landlord. It's 2 o'clock in the 1 o'clock in the morning. What are you doing? Leave it up to me. Call the landlord. And Lord answer the phone, what's that? What, what's, what's going on? What happened? Listen, I just want to let you know that my husband doesn't have the money to pay you tomorrow, okay? Good night. No, it's his problem, not your problem anymore. Go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to stay up all night thinking about how am I going to collect the money from yeah, them? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 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 People are too worried about things. You see, it's like, dudes. <clears throat> yeah. Life is simple, man. People love, People love to complicate. Mm-hmm. You see, but then yeah. I like, use that all the time when I'm teaching a class. Why keep it simple if you can complicate the whole thing? <laughs> eh, it's too easy, too simple. Let's complicate. It's like, <laughs> why? But people do it. <laughs> you see, so it's like the the getting up in the morning. I understand why things happen. Yeah. You see, again, it's not not gonna do stupid things, but I understand. I'm not lazy. Yeah. There's no jobs in town. Dude, I'll find a job. I'll walk in and I'll get a job any place I want in town. Yep. I'll go work for a week for free. And I'll prove it to them that they cannot live without me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a week is over. The guy's going to be like, dude. I, Please stay. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> we can't run this hotel, this bar, <laughs> this restaurant, this mechanic shop without you. Yeah. If you only get in pay. For the job that you do, you're not worth what you're getting paid for. You're getting wow. paid to come in and take the trash out. And that's all you do. On the day that I find somebody that can take the trash, clean up the table, you're out of job. Yeah. 
I'll prove to the, everybody they cannot live without me. You see, gotcha. so it's a it's the, the, not a hustler mentality, but it is. It's yeah. a I'm not hustling people, but I'm not afraid to to work. I'm to yeah, put my hands sure. on. I'm not afraid to. You see, I get up and do what I gotta do. So instead, just people get sit down and feel pity for me, please. Feel pity, I, oh man, I don't have a job. Oh, go get a job. I don't like my car. Go to work, get money, buy a new car. You see, yeah. tell me, I said I grew up telling my kids this, tell me what I cannot do, and mm -hmm. I'll prove you wrong. And wow. they used to joke with me, well, I wanna see you go through this wall, dad. <laughs> There's a door right there. How about the door? <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah, I'll be on the other side. Yeah. Give me a second. It's like, really? <laughs> so, yeah, it's like a, the the people complicate stuff. You see, so keep keep it simple. Find an understanding of life. Um, Things happens work. out of out of your control. So yeah, yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. You see, there's nothing. There's out of it's out of your control. Solve it is. People ask me all the time, what if I'm sparring? Just yesterday, somebody asked me in a class, if skinny guy is small, and he's like, man, I fight the big guys and they get on top of me and I can't get out from on the bottom, man. They're just trying to, they smash me, smash me. I was like, are they choking you? He said, no. Are they breaking your arm? No. Your legs? No. But I'm stuck. Stay there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he's not finishing you. Is he beating you up? No. He's just putting weight on me. It's, it's uncomfortable. Deal. Make the uncomfortable become comfortable. How would you feel, ask the kid? How would you feel, kid, not a kid, a man, if you, any of you guys, spar with a 10-year-old kid and you cannot beat him up, you cannot finish him, you cannot win, how would you feel? Dude, Fine. I, I would go to the toilet, put my head down and flush it. <laughs> <laughs> if I cannot tap a 10-year-old, if I cannot yeah. make a 10-year-old give up, yeah. I'll go to the toilet. Then <laughs> I gotta go down. It's like <laughs> so play defense. Don't let them catch you. Don't don't let them beat you. Who do you think you won? And he's like, Yeah, I like that mentality. Yeah. <laughs> you see, it's like, it's like you can don't you're thinking now that you have to beat them up. Yeah. Don't lose. If you don't lose, you're good. Seems like you got a really positive outlook on life, which mm. w which is obviously the best way to have it. Is a really positive yep. outlook on it's life. It's infectious. You know? yeah. yeah, it's really. really I suppose good. you surround yourself with positive people as well. It's a. You always asking. Running through friends that you trust and to their opinions, and they got a problem, and then it's like, but on the end of the day, call me up. It's like I don't have any money. Why not? Do you want some money? I can give you some money, but it's not going to solve your problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm temporary. I'll solve it today. Tomorrow you're going to come back and ask me again. Why you don't have any money? I don't have a job. Why you don't have a job? Go get one. I'll go, get, I'll go help you get one. You see, it's like I don't like my car. Well, work so you can get a new one. So it's not going to, wow, well, but nobody's giving to me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to help yourself sometimes, haven't you? Yeah. You got to do it. You got to have the inside inside of you and you see and be able to tell like I say all the time tell you what's impossible what's like what I cannot do and I'll prove you wrong amazing such a strong mindset it's a great strong <clears throat> mindset I was in a plane one time with special ops guys in America and we're going up to jump out of the plane parachute tunnel jump so five six of them they all have parachutes I don't have I'm going with them so the door is open, I got the door, I look, and I go, if I jump, can you guys catch me? Dude, they got me freak out, I was like, sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you, you're gonna die, <laughs> sit down now. I was like, I got six chests, <laughs> you will die, you are not gonna catch you. I was like, okay, calm down. Uh -huh. I sat down, they put the hooks in the music, they hook it up the vast, with vast, I cannot Locked. get up anymore. <laughs> I was just Locked asking. Again. I was just asking if I could jump. I saw in a movie, you will not work, you will die. I was like, okay. Okay. okay don't I think worry. I've seen that movie. It was Point Break, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does yeah. not work. They yeah. explained to me the, the, the how do you call um, the physics? The, the, the gravity is so strong 
when you put the parachute, there's no way you can hold it by hand. You rip your part. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm you sure. have to have I'm hook. Sure. Yeah, is it? Is there any? Because you've lived such a colorful, amazing life. Is there anything that you haven't done that you would like to do? Because you've you've lived an incredible life. I surf. I don't surf very not at all. Okay. I surf uh, Jaws. No Jaws. Yeah, you? Jaws. That is a Jaws? big wave Jaws spot big in wave Hawaii. Spot. Yes, That's Jaws. Massive. Yeah. With the jet ski, with one of the local guys, went down. I think I bent the jet ski. It's like holding you on. So I was like, dude, if this malfunction over here, I'll swear I'll kill you before we drop. <laughs> I'll choke you out on the we jet We went down to Jaws, down, down the wave. Oh <laughs> I jump gosh. out there, shoot the guys. The guy's like, you want to jump by yourself? I was like, no. No I want to go with you because if something happens, I'll beat you up before we head to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to do everything in their power to save you, I think. Boys. Absolutely. Because well. they don't, don't want to get so beaten up. You sharks know. and, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> no, been that, done that. It sounds like you have, to be honest with you. I, I know you've been in like a couple of movies back in the day. Are, are you doing anything like that anymore still? Or like, like appearances? Just sign with a group for them to do a, a story of, of the first UFC. Wow. Oh. A <gasps> documentary series? <clears throat> no. It's just a movie, oh, a proper like a movie. Oh, wow. 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 Proper movie. They that should sounds... start filming soon. So, just on my story of growing up in Brazil, coming to America, up to the first UFC. Are you going to be like kind of like a producer on that then or something? I'm or? a technical advisor. Yeah. Okay. Wow, wow. amazing. So Do you look forward to that. that. Do you know who's going to play you in it? Oh. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I look forward to that. You got to be somebody very handsome. Of course. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> like we go way more handsome than Hickson. Just to say way more handsome than Hickson. He said it. Not me. <laughs> yeah, that guy right there. Said <laughs> yep. <laughs> you're in trouble. To He's the one saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really amazing. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be a good yeah. one. It's like a, I look forward like, to that. Like, I mean, that's what they were saying. Um, Tucker Tully and uh, um, they were saying that it's a it was the turning point of martial arts. Oh, without doubt, it really was. It was a pivotal oh, without, moment yeah. in it time. It changed yeah. everything. It was uh, yeah. up to the first UFC. Everybody still believed karate, kung fu, yeah. tai chi. Mm -hmm. But you, you said it was style versus, style versus style, wasn't style, it? And then style versus style, yeah. the mix came after and that. It came up after that. It's like, so, yeah. I think a lot of karate schools maybe didn't do so well after that. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I remember <laughs> in the 80s and maybe early 90s, there was like a big boom of karate, wasn't there? And I think when the 90s came in with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it just sort of... Mm, yeah, yeah, it would have. UFC, so yeah. 30 years ago. So they wow. want to do a up to the first UFC. That's incredible. I'm point. looking forward to that already. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Any um, regrets, Hoyce? Nope. Nothing. Zero. We'll do it all over again, exactly the same. Wouldn't change a thing. Change one, we'll change everything. So exactly. Nice. Even my losses, I'll do it again. Same thing. Wouldn't change. It was a learning process. Mm -hmm. So, nope. Zero. That's I good. understand I, why it happened. So. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm very conscious of time, so yeah. um, I've I've messaged Graham. Okay, I yeah, gave him about a twenty minute call about ten minutes ago. Um, so you're in Aberystwyth today. You've been teaching a seminar on West Coast Jiu Jitsu. Um, how did that all start? How did you he hear about the Aberystwyth branch? You know, how did you get in touch with Katya? How did you? Where, what was the beginning? Graham, who's Graham? <laughs> <laughs> He's in trouble I today. Knew, I, knew, I knew Katya when she was a kid. Yeah, like yeah. 12, 13 years old. She used to come down, take classes. Graham, I think, was a driver. <laughs> oh, my God. He's, he's out here this. today, man. He's going to hear you. Hey, I'm leaving. You guys stay. Yeah, so yeah, 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 you guys yeah, out. Another side coming out again. Oh, that's her father. Her father used to bring her down. Yeah. And she was like little kid still already, man, coming yeah. over, taking classes with me and... So one time... That's Lon London, is it? London, in, she was, yeah. They used to drive down to London yep. yeah, from here. <clears throat> Amazing. And then one time she just contacted me and it's like, hey, I've got a place over here. You want to come? I was like, sure. Amazing. So, But I know them for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. When I was just seeing some... She's like showing me the bells, catch the sign from white 
to uh, little kids, yellow belt yeah. to orange belt to she's like she. I was like, oh my god, I forgot your little your kid one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so tall now, huh? Yeah, <laughs> she was. So she was what 12, 13, 14 yeah, years old. Kid. My height. Yeah, she yeah. showed me a picture. I was like, yeah, 14 years old. My height. It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was a kid one time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Did she get every every children's belt? Yep. Yeah. She. Yeah. She. Yep. Yeah. She did. And she I showed me. I signed every single the one. Rainbow. I wow. think I think uh, the yellow belt they didn't have it over here, right? For kids, and that's what Graham was saying. And he phoned me. He's like, "Man, <clears> can <throat> I get? Can you get one and bring one over and somehow bring yeah. it, find the one for her?" And so I got. Okay, remember if I brought oh, it from America, lovely. I got over <clears> here, <throat> in London, and put it put it Amazing. on my waist and from white to yellow. Yep. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, I've got sorry I've got another question here it, but you said you have no regrets so I don't know if it's going to work or not but is, if you could give your 20 year old self any advice what would it be do it everything all <laughs> over again <laughs> <laughs> just do it just keep going <laughs> it's a learning process no wouldn't change anything yeah. I'll, I'll tell him dude hang on tight because it's going to be a wild <laughs> awesome <laughs> life <laughs> I don't want to spoil the fun for you just hold yeah. on tight yeah, just hold on I don't want to spoil but hang yeah. on don't quit halfway <laughs> man because it's going to be a fun wild awesome life <laughs> yeah. we, we've covered a load of range of different subjects but is there, is there anything that you would like to, to say or anything you'd like to talk about or you, you I'm know? good you happy hold on Perfect. I forgot to cry I need to cry <laughs> <laughs> no. you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no yeah <laughs> Um, I mean, it's not one of those that I have to cry and people no, feel pity no. for me. No, okay, good, no, good. definitely. Woo! Not. How was no. I? Okay, hold the safe, save the. the, the <laughs> no, definitely not. And we the can't tears. thank you enough for for giving up your your precious time. And to be honest, with you, it is incredible that you came on, and we can't thank Absolutely. you enough. And thank you to Graham and West Coast and everybody who sort yeah. of made this possible. Katia, so, yeah, so yep. thank real honor. Katia, yeah, Katia for sure. Obviously, um, can't thank you all enough. Yeah, really. it's been a real honor to so, sit here with you. Thank you. It really has. Yeah, yeah. in our little sure. small town. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful town, by the way. It is. I love. Sure. Too yes. bad I cannot stay long, but normally I like to stay here for at least a couple of days, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. That beach over there is like beautiful. Where you so, go next? Where you off next? Uh, after England, Swindon. Well, no, was Swindon, Swindon, Swindon. Swindon tomorrow to Plymouth on Monday. Tuesday I'm in Berlin, um, then I'm going to, from Berlin to Zurich, back to Germany, to Kuwait, Dubai, Israel, all the way back to Spain, to back to England, to Portugal, go home for like 12 hours, switch <laughs> suitcases, and leave to Hawaii for one week. Come back for two days, and I go to uh, Baltimore and Maryland. And then I don't know. I don't remember off my head. The schedule. It's impressive that you remember that I'm, schedule. I'm, I'm, I'm old, so I don't remember the rest yeah. of the schedule after that. You did just fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. wouldn't have been able to remember any of <laughs> If you ever need anyone to hold your luggage around, then just give me a shout. You know where I live. Now. <laughs> um, just a few quick fire questions. What's your favorite film? Braveheart. Oh, oh love the film. Last of the Mohegans. That's great. Oh, too. Man. Music. Film. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, Daniel Day Lewis. Yes, those are probably the top ones. Godfather, of course. Nice. Yeah. I just rewatched the sequel. <laughs> yeah. So, yep, that kind of movies. Fantastic. <laughs> what music do you listen to? Everything. Yeah. I'm not really care about it. Having kids, whatever. Come on. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I like country. Okay, who's the country? It's my car. You're gonna put your music on. Okay. As long as it's not Baby Shark on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess your kids are a bit older now. It's yeah. not, not too bad. <laughs> Safe, yeah. Not too bad. Hoist, thank you very much. It really yeah. has been an, thank an you honor. Thank you, guys. It's been an honor. Appreciate. It's really been an honor. Thank you. As you say in Wales, yeah. Dior and Val. Dior and Val. <laughs>